Hello guys, today is going to be our final Paris food vlog and we are going to an interesting restaurant for lunch we have made a reservation for 12 and it's now around um, 11.50 so we've got some time to quickly talk about this restaurant because it's really really close to us this restaurant is called Le Resistance, which means the resistance and I would say they are a modern French cuisine type of restaurant. The interesting thing about this restaurant is that they work only with ingredients that are provided by farmers and producers that are local all over France. From the meat to the vegetables, the butter, even down to a grain of salt, no industrial food products are used. These local farmers and producers work against the industrialization and the generalization of food flavors. Thus, they protect the biodiversity of breeds of animals as well as different varieties of vegetables, allowing us to taste a wider spectrum of different tastes. Hence, they are called the resistant fighters. La Resistance also practices a zero waste policy which means they will use the entirety of the animal from head to tail as well as like the entirety of the vegetable. So I think that is very amazing. And to top it all off, they are also a Michelin Bib Command restaurant. So there you go, a really quick introduction on this spot. To be honest, it's not our first time trying it out. In fact, on our first day of arrival in Paris, we had them for dinner and I felt that we really wanted to introduce this place to you guys because it was really enjoyable. So let's head for that lunch. Hi. Hello. See, OJ is close. Ah. Alright guys, we are seated now in the restaurant and first off, let's talk about the restaurant vibes. Very home style and very, very creatively decorated. You can see these lights, they are like rattan based and they're just hanging, they are different sizes and there's this long island looking thing right in the middle of the restaurant and the lady over there is just cutting bread up. I don't know how bread it is but it looks really huge. And right at the back, you actually see a very home style like counter base. I think that is for them to set up the drinks for you, maybe prepare drinks because the kitchen is upstairs. They have a sitting area upstairs as well for the customers. I think there are two chefs, you know, working in this kitchen. Let's take a look at the menu. So apparently lunch menu is very different from what we had for dinner. Uh, it's more value for money in a way. You can either choose just the main plate, uh, which is 14 euros, or you can go with the entree and the main plate, or the main plate with the dessert, which is 16.50 euros. Or you can choose all three, start with the, the main plate and the dessert, which is 18.50 euros. So we've ordered, let's wait for it now. Alright guys, starters are here, really quick service. We have got over here the celery soup. I don't know if I'm mistaken, but it almost feels like there's this little bit of like, like a curry powder smell. Mm. And you can see on this bowl of soup, aside from the creamy consistency of the soup, we have got croutons on top as well. So let's quickly try this out. It has got a rather complex flavour. It doesn't really remind me very much of celery, but it reminds me of a mix of multiple vegetables. And the sweetness that comes from, you know, when you boil down vegetables, that sweetness is very apparent in this dish. The consistency is almost like a paste, but not quite there yet. It has a lower viscosity than a paste, but it's got that very nice, um, sort of like, grainy consistency to it. It's like if you grind down vegetables and you get a little bit of that texture, it's very interesting. The sweetness is a key point here. And behind the sweetness, you get a little bit of that savory saltiness that pulls back on the vegetable sweetness a little bit. The croutons are toasted well. It does provide a very much needed crunch, that bite to that very pasty feeling textured soup. Since we are serving bread, we definitely have to do the bread dipping and soup thing. So let's grab one of this bread over here. Break it into a slightly smaller piece. Dip it in. 
Hmm. Very nicely toasty. There's even this sourness, like almost like sourdough, like the yeast flavor. Mm, the bread is very nice, it's a very rustic looking bread. Inside it's chewy, and outside it's crunchy. And then after the flour fragrance comes. It doesn't match the soup though, just see the bread on its own. The little sweetness somehow matches very really with the bread. But really, this was all I I just, I'm just used to dipping bread in soups. So the bread on its own is really nice. Next up, the tuna carpaccio. This is basically just raw sliced tuna. Uh, served with generally a sauce that is savory and maybe a bit spicy and you can see they have added these pickles here and some roasted pumpkins so let's try this out so let me grab a little bit of that pumpkin together with the tuna here the sauce mm. Oh, there's some sort of mustard in there. It starts off with that wow flavor of the tuna. So then you get a little bit of that sweetness from the pumpkin with that toastiness. And that sauce. It's a sweet sauce, but I don't know where is that mustard taste coming from. I got a strong heat of mustard earlier. Let me mix this up properly and then try it again. I think the mustard flavor, I, I think it comes from the fish. Oh, the fish has been salted. It's like preserved and they've placed this mustard flavor in it. So it gives you that spiciness from the fish, not from the sauce. The sauce is just there to give you that sweetness. I think it's maybe like a pumpkin sort of sauce. It's got that sweetness. Mm. If you mix it well, the balance of flavors do provide that much needed excitement. But if you do not mix it well, then you get too much of a, a mustard heat. Mm because are nice, they're tangy. I think they're pickled cabbages. It reminds me of kimchi. I don't know if this is the kimchi dish that the lady mentioned about. I think it's kimchi. Very interesting dish. Hmm. Yep. Gotta stir it up well. And then you get all the assignment. Hmm. The fish does taste a little bit overly salty though. I've got a great idea. Let us try putting some of this uh, fish on the bread. The bread has found their saltiness. This is, I think this is a very interesting dish and the flavors feel right but I think the balance for me personally was a little bit off. Hmm. Now, ready for the means. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay guys, the main dishes are here. Uh, I got with me the cabbage with beef within and I believe this is one of the traditional French dishes. And you can see there are potatoes on the side, there are more cabbages. I believe this is probably a leek. Then underneath there's some sauce with some sort of mesh. I'm not too sure what it is. But let us start by cutting in to that piece of cabbage in the middle. Ooh. Mmm, look at those beef. Looks really tender. And let's quickly grab some of it with the cabbage. Mmm, mm, tender beef, savory. A little bit of that beefy flavor, not much. And the cabbage gives a refreshing crunch. And it sort of gives more moisture to the beef. Mmm. Oh, now that beef in this sauce again. When you bite on that part of a little bit of beef fat there, that fatty flavor. Mm. Let's grab it with some of the mash on the side. Mmm, it's some form of puree. It gives you the sweetness. Mmm, definitely mix it in. The sweetness contrasts with the savoriness from the beef. Mmm. Look guys, this is not a beautiful dish to look at, but the taste, it tastes so homemade. It feels like your grandmother just cooked for you. And I'm guessing this is probably a really homemade traditional French dish. And it's interesting, because the cabbage has been cooked down, but it still retains that crunch. So it contrasts really well with that beefiness, and it tones down that beefiness a little bit. With that puree, mm, that sweetness is much needed on this savory salty beef. Very nice. Mm. Yeah, potato perfectly roasted. Got a nice potato flavor which is much needed. Mm, this is absolutely a very enjoyable dish, not gonna lie. Doesn't look the most pretty, but very enjoyable and I like it very much. So it's my turn. What I've ordered is a sea bass with quinoa. This is my first time trying quinoa. And these cubes, I think it's a radish, some sort of radish. But for this, I'm not so sure because it's been sliced slices. I think it's some sort of vegetable. Let's try the sea bass first. Mm. 
Mm. There's a sweetness from the sea bass with the oil fragrance and the texture is a flaky and tender. It's cooked very well. Mm. Mm, I didn't really taste any flavor from the quinoa but only the texture. The texture is crunchy and chewy. Mm. Yeah. Let's try the yellow things which I guess is a radish. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a radish. It starts with the sweetness and ends with some bitterness. And I think they have put some salt on top so you could taste the saltiness. There's also some puree at the side. Let's try some with the fish and quinoa. Mm. I think it's a radish puree because it's the same flavor. It starts with the sweetness and ends with the bitterness. And I think the green one is a rocket puree. Overall, it's a decent dish. You could taste the orange flavor from the radish. And I think the fish is done really well and the flavor blend quite decently together. I quite enjoy this. Alright guys, over here we've got the dessert. It is some form of cake together with some coffee cream and caramel. And there are some wafer looking things on top together with some like nuts sprinkles. So let's go! Mmm! Light coffee flavor. The cake texture is almost like a, you know, the type of banana loaf that you get, but of course without the banana flavor. The caramel gives that sweetness. The wafer on top gives a nice crunch. It's a really decent dessert to end. Alright guys, gonna finish this up and see you for plenty time. So after a hearty lunch at Le Resistant, uh, we are having some coffee. We are at this place called Dreaming Man. It's run by a Japanese. And I'm not a coffee expert, but I quite like his coffee. Lah. So back to Le Resistant. For lunch today, definitely very enjoyable meal. Relatively simple and in a way traditional dishes. Through these dishes, you can really taste the freshness and the quality of the ingredients. And I think the aim to prioritize flavors of the natural ingredients first really shines through from their dishes. I also noticed that their dishes lean more earth heavy because they use a lot of like root based vegetables. Yeah, like carrots, radish, yeah. beetroot, yeah, artichokes. artichokes. Yeah. yeah. So if you you know you like earthy flavours, mm. I think this is that spot for you. you. In relation to the plating, I would say it's very clear that you can see it's not like fine dining. Mm. It's sort of like like very family based kind of plating. Mm, yeah. <laughs> very family environment. It almost feels like you are eating at a friend's house. house. Yeah, your friend is cooking, you know, like some traditional recipe that he has learned from his grandmother. Yeah, that is the vibe that this restaurant gives. Mm. And as we mentioned, uh, we have had them a couple of times uh, before this particular episode and we actually had them for dinner. dinner. So dinner is slightly different. Dinner is slightly more expensive, but it also allows the chef to showcase their yeah. skills. Yeah, showcase more of their skill mm. and they could utilize a wider range of ingredients. So I would recommend going for dinner. Mm. Uh, it's more expensive, but it's it's actually pretty value for money as well. Uh. For dinner, it's around the typical bistro price, to be mm. honest. That's it. I would say the chef is pretty creative and very mm. experimental. And there are times where we had dishes that could be way too experimental. So keep that in mind. Uh, mm. Come with a very open mind. And just, just try out the flavors and, and enjoy, enjoy it to the fullest. Yeah, and with that being said, La Resistant scores a half a plate on the gourmet plate, which means it is some high quality culinary right there. I still recommend it if you are nearby and you want to try something that is interesting, uh, very chill and home based vibes to it, do drop by to try them out. So that concludes our Paris on screen <laughs> food exploration. Hope you have enjoyed our food vlogs. If you did, do consider giving us a thumbs up. If you had to subscribe, do consider subscribing and hit that notification bell button. See you again next week in Malaysia. Bye-bye.